If your child is having abdominal pain, don't give any aspirin, don't give Pepto-Bismol. All that can cause black stools in the child and aspirin by itself can cause liver damage. So please, if your child has black stools, see your doctor, don't give Pepto-Bismol because that's another common reason that we get. Do we have Pepto-Bismol? Yes, Nigeria. it's here. Okay. It's, it's, yes, it's pink. And a lot of people give their children Pepto-Bismol. Really? Yeah, for belly pain. So that's another thing I forgot to mention. Hello everyone and welcome to Pediatrics To Go, your go-to for pertinent pediatric information in our world today. We have Dr. Ekwase Sanusi in our midst and she is a board certified pediatrician at Children's Healthcare Atlanta and co-founder of Pediatric Partners, Victoria and and Lagos. I'm Francisca Lename, I'm your co-host and facilitator and she will be talking about abnormal stool in children today. So on to you, Dr. Ekwase. Thank you, Francisca. So um, we have a lot of moms that come in and they complain about the color of their child's stool. Doc, my stool, my child passed stool today and the stool was green. And they're like, should I be worried? And when we get moms that come in with those kind of concerns, it's actually, um, it's a major concern for them. But the truth is, I ask people, I say, what stool color do you think is normal? A lot of people say, well, I think stool should be brown. Some people say, I, st I think stool should be yellow. And we have moms coming in and saying, my child had green stool or my child had white stool. What should I be worried? And the, the bottom line is no. Green stool is actually an indication that the formula or the breast milk that the child is feeding, um, there's a little bit of fat that wasn't absorbed. So the bile salts that the body produces naturally is what makes the stool green. So if you're not absorbing a lot of fat in the food or if you did, your child hasn't eaten a very high fat content food, um, in the last 24 hours, the stool can be green because that means the bile is not getting absorbed. So when you see a child with green stool, no, it's not abnormal. It's sorry, actually, but, show, but could you please explain bile to the audience that's a no medical survey? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so bile is actually a liquid that's uh, it's part of the digestive system. It's produced in the gallbladder and it's actually excreted or it's actually secreted or it actually goes into the GI tract. So it goes into the your duodenum, which is the first part of the intestines, mm -hmm. and it's, it aids in the digestion of whatever food your child is eating. We have a lot of babies that have green stool, and that's because if they are breastfed, the breast milk has uh, a limited amount of fats. So by the time the body has absorbed the fats that it needs, the remaining of the fat in the formula comes out in the stool, and sometimes the stool is green because bile, bile salts also come out with it. And bile is produced in the liver. It, it helps with digestion. So that will cause the stool to be uh, green. So if you have green stool, your baby has green stool, it's nothing to worry about. The other stool colors that a lot of moms don't realize is normal is black stools. If your baby is on an iron formula, that iron in the, in the baby's food makes the stool black. So if your baby's stool is black, nothing to worry about. If the stool is um, white, sometimes the casein, which is the way uh, there's milk, baby milk produce, um, breast milk and formula has two types of protein. It's called, there's either whey protein or casein protein. There's actually more whey protein in breast milk than um, in, formula, in formula. So a lot of babies might end up not digesting a lot of the uh, milk uh, that they ingest and their stool can end up being white. So if your baby stool is white, that's all part of the milk, the milk protein coming out and it's normal too. So if your baby stool is brown or yellow, a lot of newborn babies, their stool is CD yellow. And parents say, my baby has diarrhea when you're breastfeeding your baby. If the stool is liquidy with a little, with dots of like seeds, CD yellow stool in breastfed babies is totally normal. Mm -hmm. So green stool is normal. Yellow stool is normal, especially if it's water in a be breastfed baby. Um, white stool is normal. Black stool is normal. Brown stool is normal. The stool color we don't like is red or maroon. Maroon, like my oh, dress wow. color. <laughs> when you see a baby with maroon colored stool, that's th that's called blood. That's basically blood that has been digested. Uh, that has been probably maybe the baby has a ble uh, bleeder in the stomach, and it's passing that color stool. That's not normal. Oh, that's... Now there, there's a medication. It's an antibody called Omnicef or Cefdinir that can make stool the color of my dress. And once the baby's on that, we tell parents your baby is going to be having reddish maroon stool. If your baby's stool color is that with this medicine, don't worry about it. It's normal. That's what the medicine does to the stool color. That's the only time that it's okay not to see a doctor. But if you have a baby that has bright red stool, 
that's blood, and it's usually from the bottom uh, lower part of the intestinal, uh, the intestines. You want to be seen. You want to take your baby to be seen. If the baby has coran jelly stools, which is common in a condition that we call interception, and the stool usually is like reddish. Anytime you see reddish stool or you see maroon colored stool, please see your pediatrician or your GP as soon as possible. That's not normal. And your baby definitely needs to be checked out. Okay, so I know that pediatric medicine deals with children between like 0 to 21. So what of like, let's say, young adults that have stool that's black? That should be a concern because it reverses its case now, right? Yes. When a child who is a teenager or young adult, now pediatrics, people think is only for little babies. We actually see patients from birth to 21. We have treated all kinds of, you name it, we treat diabetes in uh, usually it's type 1 diabetes in children, not type 2, which is with older people. We have treated hypertension. We treat all kinds of different uh, sicknesses in children, especially because we see up to age 21. Mm -hmm. By the time a child is getting to 22 years, then they need to see their adult doctors. We have a lot of patients that want to still come and see us because it's like, <laughs> oh, I've known you all my life and I want to come. We love you too, but uh, it's time to go to see your adults. It's time to go. Doctor, by the time we have some moms who have already had babies and they want to come and see us with their babies. Oh. And we're like, sweetie, it's time to go see a, a adult pediatrician, but a, a adult doctor. But generally, um, if you're a teenager and you have black stools, now that's different from a baby mm -hmm. who is on iron, who is taking a, a formula with iron and having black stools. Please go see your doctor because the commonest reason that we see black stools in older children, and that's a good point that you brought up, yes. is usually stomach ulcers. So if you have ulcers and your stool is black, we've had children that their hemoglobin, normal hemoglobin should be between 12 and 16. Their hemoglobin was like six. And that's because they've had bleeding ulcers that wasn't picked up and they've had black stools. And they, they heard, they thought, oh, black stools is normal on our program today, but it's not normal in that age group. Okay, yes, so sir. Please, 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 please. <laughs> if you have black stools, go see your doctor, especially if you're a child or a teenager, a young child, uh, teenager or young adult, you need to see your GI, GI specialist will start with your, with your primary care physician or your GP. Okay, so for children, for children that like are uh, depicting that show or exhibit um, red colored stool, what are the symptoms? How, how do you know when they're not on that medicine, on that prescription you called? Now, when children have blood in the stools, or they have red color stool or abnormal stool color. Um, uh, just also something to keep in mind, whatever you eat, sometimes if it's not digested, it can come out the way it was ingested. So sometimes if a child eats uh, blueberries, the stool might end up being black. For no, and it doesn't have any health effect. No, no. Oh, it's, if you're not absorbing a lot of what you've eaten, you can actually pass it out the way you ingested it. Some children will ingest chewing gum and be noticing that there's pink in their <laughs> stool. And it's usually the chewing gum that they, I mean, it's not advisable to swallow chewing gum, but yeah. when children do, we see parents coming, you know, their stool had some pink, pink in it. Did they eat any? Gum. Yes. And then even um, uh, beetroots. Some children oh, yes, will yes, eat beets and then their stool will be red, red and they don't have any other symptoms. Now, you always have to take disease as a continuum. So if a child is coming in with red color stools, you always want to find out what are the other symptoms. If they have absolutely no other symptoms and it's just a one-time thing, you can actually do a stool test. You can send the stool for guaiac, uh, guaiac, t a guaiac test, which is a cold blood test. Okay. There's different tests in different um, hospitals, different uh, ways of checking for blood in the stool. But the general rule is if you have a stool that could be a possibility that the child has blood in the stool, you want to do an a cold blood test and the doctors usually will do it. And the guaiac test, I loved it because it's just a card. You put the stool on it, you put some reagents and then it shows you if it uh, turns a certain color, there's blood. If it turns a different color, then it's a control and it's normal, it's negative. So you always want to have your stool tested for a cold blood, especially if there's red history of red stool, maroon stool, and you've not eaten anything red that could cause your stool to be that color. So um, yeah, that's a rule of thumb. If your stool is not the regular greenish, or uh, brown or yellow, and your child has other symptoms like extreme abdominal pain and is uncomfortable, your child might need to be evaluated in the emergency room or might, your child might need to have an ultrasound to make sure that there's uh, nothing else going on. But well. uh, abnormal stool color by itself sometimes is just an indication of what the child has eaten in the last 24 to 48 hours. Generally, transit time from when you eat something to when it comes out 
generally is between 24 to 48 hours. Depending on if the child is constipated, it might take three days. If the child is eating a lot of starch or dairy products, it might take a while for the stool to actually pass. If the child has a lot of, uh, uh, imp uh, how do you say, it, slow transit from just the food that they are eating, then you are looking at sometimes children might go once every four days. Just so, but the bathroom. Yes, but just if a child is eating a lot of fruits and fiber, drinking a lot of water, most times it takes about 24 to 48 hours for the stool. Whatever you eat today should be passed out in the next 48 hours. Let's say the child is on medication and like how long was the duration of recovery for the child? Well, we, when you talk about recovery, you're talking about if there's a problem that has been found out. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's blood in the stool, if it is occult blood, the doctors have to do more tests. They have to check blood work. They have to see if the child is anemic, if there's blood in the stool. How long has there been blood in the stool? There's also something else, hookworms. Hookworms is one of the major reasons why there's a global anemic, uh, there's global anemia. It's actually the number one reason why a lot of people have low blood count sure. because they have parasites in the body that are um, causing blood to be lost from the system. So. The reason when we have a child with red stools and there's blood in the stools, we usually check for ova and parasite. Ova is like the eggs of the parasite. parasite. If a child has hookworm, then you have to treat that, kill those hook, hookworms, so that it's not sucking out the blood content from the in the GI tract. And then, um, if for instance a child has blood in the stool and it's been verified that it's definitely blood in the stool, we have to check the blood work. We have to do blood work, make sure the child is not anemic. We're also checking for eosinophilia because sometimes that's a high eosinophil count. That could be um, also an indication that there's worms or allergies. The child could have allergies to the milk protein and be bleeding in the stomach. Wow. That child needs to be followed by a gastroenterologist who might end up doing a scope to see if, because if it's an older child that has an ulcer, that child needs an endoscopy okay. to see if there's ulcers in there. Please, if you're, we're talking about endoscopy, you want to go to see a gastroenterologist or a specialist in that field. You don't want to go to a GP who says, oh yes, I've done two or three gast uh, uh, gastro uh, endoscopies <laughs> and this is what you have. No, go to the preferred person that can do that. Now, that is a whole different scope or beyond this, what we're talking about. But a doctor will be able to tell when you need to have those scopes done. If it's a bright red blood from, from below, you might need a colonoscopy. And basically what, this, what those are is like tubes with cameras and the doctor will put a tube in the gut to see if there's any bleeders there. And then if they diagnose that, yes, there's a polyp that's bleeding, then they might need to take it out and send it for um, histology so that they can make sure that there's no cancer in the child's uh, uh, abdomen. Now, adults are different from children. A lot of <laughs> yes. adults, when adults have blood in the stool and they have polyps and all kinds of stuff, Adults are more prone to having cancer. We don't see childhood cancers half as much as we do in adults. Mm -hmm. So a child that has, in, in medicine, we say common things happen commonly. So a child that has blood in the stool, it could be just allergies or a reaction to the formula that they are taking. And when you take away that formula, the blood goes away. And so it could be, normal. and it still becomes normal because it's almost like the formula is causing sores in, this, in the gastrointestinal tract. And once that offending agent is taken away, there's no more blood in the stools. Wow. So it could be as simple as that. That's but it's always important to have your doctor evaluate. Then the doctor will now decide. Most doctors are trained to know their limits and to know when a child needs to be referred to a specialist. In a, Like we have pediatric gastroenterologists. We have pediatric um, infectious disease specialists. And at the end of the day, the pediatrician will decide who needs to see the child and decide where the child should be treated. But it's always a good thing when your child has abnormal stool, especially if it's red or black mm. or maroon colored, to see your doctor, to see your pediatrician. Thank you, Dr. Sadnessy. So you guys, you've heard from the master herself. So don't forget to follow us all at- Master or, or mis mistress? Who knows? <laughs> Ma well, master, again, matter. master in pediatrics, <laughs> like children, pediatrics. So like, right, yes. right. so like, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at pediatrics to go, and then we'll be seen next time face to face. <laughs>